Mortal Enemies, a Good Omens fan fiction, written by Appleseeds, read aloud by Sky Asimaru. If you enjoy this podfic, you can check out the original story on Archive of Our Own. If you would like to hear more of my recordings or see some of my own work, you can find me through the pen and screen name of Sky Asimaru. Mortal Enemies by Appleseeds Summary Aziraphale is a supervillain who keeps failing to destroy the world. Crowley is the hero who keeps letting him get away, inevitably ending up back in his clutches. Perhaps there's more going on here than just complete ineptitude. After all, what if your mortal enemy just happens to be the one who understands you the most. (laughs) Come now, my dear. You didn't really believe you could defeat me, did you? (laughs) Whatever it is you're planning, you won't get away with it. Oh, but I think I will. Crowley had lost count of how many times he'd ended up in this position, strapped to a cold, metallic table in Aziraphale's secret underground laboratory. In a way, he admired Aziraphale's tenacity. Once a sweet, handsome, (laughs) beside the point, aspiring magician, Aziraphale had been seeking vengeance on humanity ever since his beloved fluffy white rabbit, Harry, had been eaten by a four-headed hellhound created by the toxic pollution being spewed out by the world's evil capitalist industries. Having been raised in a religious family, Aziraphale, or the Avenging Angel, as he had come to be known, had taken his inspiration for his revenge attempts from the Bible. After having devoted himself to getting the requisite undergraduate and master's degree, and then finally a Ph.D. in atmospheric chemistry. After all, what evil genius do you know who doesn't have the title doctor? The flood had failed as had the plague of locusts and the rain of fire and brimstone, which had just left the whole place smelling like rotting eggs for a while. Still, he had never given up, and neither had Crowley, everyone's favorite hero, who had taken it upon himself to thwart each of Aziraphale's evil deeds. Aziraphale shuffled over to the table, and rested his hand on Crowley's shoulder. Mm. How have you been, my dear? Ah, you know, and can't complain. You? Very well, thank you. Uh, besides being consumed by my unyielding thirst for vengeance. Uh, yeah, it can be like that. I uh, don't suppose I can convince you to stop whatever evil thing you're planning and let me go, eh? Good and evil are a matter of perspective, are they not? I'm the one trying to create a better world. By wiping everybody out? It is sometimes necessary to burn away the old, to make way for the new, to clear away the detritus and allow the fresh growth to emerge. Speaking of which, did you set up that arboretum you were telling me about? Oh, yeah, I did. Crowley replied, struggling a bit against his restraints in an attempt to get more comfortable while he gazed up at his captor. And how is that going? Uh, Really well, thanks. I love tending my plants, you know, when I'm not busy trying to stop you from destroying them and all other life on this planet. Hmm. Well, whatever notions you've got into your head about the immorality of my actions, I'm afraid there is nothing you can do to convince me to alter my plans, and I can't have you continually interfering with them. Aw, come on, Azarafel, Crowley ventured. Dr. Phil, if you please. 
Jesus Christ, really? Don't you think we should be on first name terms by now? I didn't sit through a gruelling three and a half hour Viva Voce examination to have people refuse to use my title. Although I suppose we have become rather familiar now, haven't we? Perhaps you would prefer me to address you as Anthony. Crowley made a low, grumbling sound and averted his gaze, feeling his cheeks heating in response to the way Aziraphale said his name. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you try to do. You know I'll always stop you. Crowley fought against the restraints at his wrists, and Aziraphale responded by tightening them slightly, his warm fingertips grazing against Crowley's sensitive skin, making him shiver. I know you'll always try, although I must say I've come to rather enjoy these little meetings of ours. <laughs> Is that why you never just kill me? Why you always tie me up and lay out all your evil plans in excruciating detail so that I'll know exactly what I need to do and when in order to thwart you? Oh, just making polite conversation. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, come on, just let me go. You don't really want to destroy everything. If you did, you'd just kill me and get it over with. You know if you wipe out all life on Earth, that includes the chef at that sushi restaurant you love. And every member of the London Symphony Orchestra. A Seraphel sighed heavily. Oh, dramatic bastard. You just don't have the same level of foresight that I do. Everything will be much better when this is all over. <laughs> so what are you going to do? Make me lie here and watch while you destroy everything? And not at all. I may enjoy these little get-togethers of ours, but I'm hardly about to give you the opportunity to break free and thwart my plans. Keeping you in close proximity to my equipment while I enact my plan would be foolhardy, wouldn't it? <laughs> Hasn't stopped you from doing that about a million times before. Well, I have reflected on those experiences and intend to pursue a different course of action this time. Oh, yeah? What's that? I'm not telling you. Crowley raised his eyebrow. You're not? No. As you've astutely pointed out, every time I have amiably shared my plans with you, you have treacherously used that information to prevent me from carrying them out. So, this time, I'm not telling you. Huh. Okay. Well, you've got me all tied up. If you're not going to brag about your evil plans, what are you planning to do? <laughs> I need to stop you from interfering when the time comes. So I'm going to do something that will make you finally accept how powerful I am. Something that will make you think twice before interfering with my plans in the future. Oh, and just to make you aware, I have fired Newton as my henchman. So don't get any ideas about using him to cause an unexpected systems failure. <laughs> Wouldn't dream of it. Got to say, though, it's about time you got rid of him. Who'd have thought someone could stop the destruction of the entire world just by attempting a disk defragmentation? Well, as I've said, you live and learn. So, what's it to be? Eternity in the deepest pit? <laughs> A pit of despair, perhaps. You're gonna torture me? In a sense. Hold still for me, dear. Crowley rolled his eyes and lay his head back on the table, while Aziraphale wheeled over a trolley and came to stand closely at his side. Crowley turned his head slightly to watch as Aziraphale extracted an electrode attached to a cable from a mass of them on the trolley. He smiled sweetly 
and ran his fingers through Crowley's hair, which made him feel tingly all over. <coughs> Crowley swallowed roughly. Aziraphale would presumably just think he was rightly intimidated, which, although better than the truth, was still far from ideal. Shh, it's all right, my dear. I've invested in a state-of-the-art set of gel-free electrodes that can be attached directly to your hair. It's so lovely, I would hate to do anything to ruin it. You bought special electrodes so you wouldn't mess up my hair? <laughs> and you have the nerve to call me evil. Aziraphale threaded his fingers through Crowley's hair again, a series of delicate strokes that were almost tender and reverential in nature. He looked right into Crowley's eyes, and Crowley clenched his fists, grasping at the leather restraints binding his wrists. So lovely, Aziraphale said softly. Crowley squeezed his eyes closed, gasping quietly when he felt the light pressure of Aziraphale affixing the first electrode to his scalp. <clears throat> what are you doing? Crowley tried asking again. <laughs> You'll just have to wait and see. Crowley glared at him. Ah, don't give me that crap. Aziraphale chuckled and continued fixing the electrodes, his close proximity and gentle touch making Crowley's pulse accelerate. He released a shuddering breath, and Aziraphale tenderly cupped his cheek. <laughs> it's all right. You'll learn your lesson, as I have learned mine, and we can both move forward. <sighs> Why do you want to scan my brine? You don't give up, do you? <laughs> Look who's talking. Aziraphale fixed the last electrode into position and stepped away with a proud smile on his face, pressing a button to boot up the device to which the electrodes were attached. <laughs> All right, since there's no possible way for you to escape or to stop me, I'll tell you. Crowley snorted a laugh and then hurriedly cleared his throat. <coughs> uh, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. That's totally not funny. Um, carry on? Aziraphale sighed dramatically again and turned the device around so that Crowley could see the screen. Oh, this device will scan your brain and identify everyone you love. When I press this big red button, it will show me where they are in the world so that my targeted missiles can seek them out and destroy them as punishment for your incessant interference. Crowley's eyes widened with horror and he reflexively tried to sit up, being forced back down against the metal table by the restraints. Uh, no! No, 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 no! Uh, don't press that button! Uh, don't do it! Uh, shit! Fuck! Shitting hell! Fuck! Aziraphale threw his head back and laughed. An evil supervillain, mwahahaha kind of laugh. <laughs> Oh, how far we've come. Who would have thought that the almighty Anthony Crowley, would-be saviour of all humanity, could be brought down by something as soft and fluffy as love? Crowley's heart was pounding in his chest. <clears throat> Look, seriously, Aziraphale, Dr. Fell, do not press that button. You really don't want to do this. Aziraphale slammed his palm down on the big red button. Crowley cringed violently. He'd have been peeking between his fingers if his hands weren't currently restrained as Aziraphale looked at the map displayed on the screen, his brow furrowing. He zoomed in. Then he zoomed in some more until they were both staring at a map 
of Aziraphale's secret underground laboratory, a red light blinking right over it. Uh, you fuck shit! You fucking hell! Yeah, um, hey, look, Aziraphale, it's not what you think. It's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's me. Um, yeah, it's me. I mean, I, I, uh, I love myself. I love myself. Uh, yeah, I, um, I've been working on that, you know, the whole, uh, self-esteem thing. Crowley swallowed roughly and cleared his throat. <clears> throat> making, uh, good progress, I think. Uh, well, I mean, evidently, right? Because, um, you know, that's there. That light is there over me, where I am, because I love myself. Mm-hmm. Aziraphale zoomed in a little more. No! No, stop that! Crowley urged desperately. Aziraphale released the controls. Uh, can't you just be proud of me for my success in my journey towards self-love or something? Uh, just uh, don't touch it again, okay? Uh, just let me go. I promise I won't try to interfere with any of your plans. Uh, you got me, okay? You win. Big, scary, evil love missiles defeated me. Uh, please, Aziraphale, please let me go. Aziraphale stared at the screen for a while. Appearing deep in thought, Crowley swallowed back the lump in his throat and grimaced, the seconds seeming to drag on while he waited for Aziraphale to do something. Eventually, Aziraphale sighed wistfully and pulled up a chair, flopping down onto it beside Crowley. <sighs> Do you want to know the real reason I fired Newton? Uh, him blowing up all your stuff repeatedly wasn't the real reason? Crowley asked incredulously. He made fun of me, Aziraphale said with an adorable pout. Crowley's eyebrow arched up his forehead. Eh? Uh? Do you remember when I crowded you up against the wall and searched you thoroughly for concealed weapons? <laughs> Only every night in my dreams. Yeah. He said that wasn't very dastardly of me at all. And when I leaned in close to you and stared into your eyes while I threatened you, and when I whispered my ingenious plans directly in your ear, and when I pressed my hips against yours to hold you in place while I held that knife to your throat, he said that those things weren't at all intimidating and threatening as I'd intended. He said they were actually rather... Uh, what? Homoerotic. Crowley gasped with shock. Ah! That bastard! Yes, I knew. Thank you. Uh, can kind of see his point, though. Uh, yes, well, I'm not the one. <laughs> Aziraphale began, reaching for the controls and zooming in further on his device, right down to the room they were currently occupying. Uh, what? That's me. I told you, it's me. Aziraphale sighed heavily again. <sighs> He really did have a flair for the dramatic, and got up from his chair, walking to the other side of the room. The flashing light on the screen followed his movements. Um, you sure you fired Newt? Because I'm pretty sure that's broken. Aziraphale approached the side of the table, looking at Crowley with wide eyes. You love me? Don't you? He asked softly. <sighs> you do. You love me. Yeah, love to hate you, maybe. Love trying to defeat you. You love me. Now oh, shut up. It's not like that. I just... Uh... 
Crowley blew out a long breath and rolled his head back, hitting the table with a dull thud. No one talks to me like you do. No one understands what it's like trying to save the world. And I know we're going about it in different ways, but I feel like you get it, you know? It's not a big deal. Just let me go, okay? We can pretend this never happened. But I don't want to pretend this never happened, as Seraphel said quietly, resting his hand on Crowley's arm. <laughs> Let's get these off you, shall we? Aziraphel began carefully removing the electrodes from Crowley's hair, while Crowley lay rigidly still, all of his muscles tense, questioning every decision he'd ever made. Once Aziraphel was finished, he lightly ran his fingers through Crowley's hair a few times. If I remove the restraints, will you promise not to run away? Or try to blow up my laboratory? <laughs> what kind of question is that? Please, Anthony, dear, I'd really like for us to talk. Uh, fine. Aziraphale smiled fondly and moved down to Crowley's feet, slowly and carefully unfastening the leather straps, binding his ankles to the table. Crowley lay completely still while Aziraphale then released each of his wrists in turn and didn't even get up once he'd been completely freed. Aziraphale hopped up onto the table, so Crowley reluctantly dragged himself up, moving to sit beside him, their legs dangling over the edge. I do think Newton might have been right. Aziraphale said bashfully, gazing down at his lap. Upon reflection, if I had really wanted to kill you, I would have plunged that knife into your carotid artery rather than simply staring at it and thinking about how much I wanted to kiss you there. I don't think that's normal behavior for someone in my position, is it? <laughs> and if I'd really wanted to kill you, I wouldn't have waited until I knew you were safe before blowing all your shit up every time. <laughs> Perhaps we are more alike than we thought. I must admit, I have grown rather fond of you. I don't think it would be unreasonable to say I love you too. Huh. Maybe we can, I don't know, work together. Come up with another way to save the world? <laughs> I'd like that, Aziraphale said with a smile, taking Crowley's hand and squeezing it gently. <sighs> Did you really think about kissing me? Crowley asked, his blood rushing to his skin and his pulse quickening just at the thought of it. <laughs> Rather a lot, actually. Uh, a lot of kissing, or you thought about it on a lot of occasions? Oh, uh, well, both, I suppose. Really? Crowley asked a little breathlessly. They were gazing into each other's eyes now and Crowley's heart was racing faster than it had been during the most daring of his escapes from Aziraphale's clutches. At least, he thought they'd been daring at the time. Apparently, Aziraphale had just been letting him go. He wouldn't tell anyone back home that, though. And right now, in Aziraphale's clutches, was exactly where he wanted to be. You could kiss me now, if you want. A thrill shiver raced down Crowley's spine as Aziraphale tenderly cradled his jaw and leaned in close, softly brushing their lips together. Crowley tugged him closer, 
winding his fingers in Aziraphale's soft blonde curls as he returned the kiss, which rapidly built into something more fervent and desperate. Oh, fuck. You feel amazing. I've wanted to do this for longer than I can remember. Crowley whispered against Aziraphale's lips. Oh, so have I. I should never have insisted you wear that tight black wetsuit when I lowered you into the shark tank. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was weird, Crowley responded before Aziraphale claimed his lips again, pushing him to lie back on the metal table. It wasn't the most comfortable surface to be doing this, but Crowley had other things on his mind right now. Oh. I was actually worried you would try to escape while I left you alone in the changing room. <laughs> it wouldn't have been very heroic, would it? Besides, then I wouldn't have been able to show off how hot I looked in that thing. Oh, you really did. It's no wonder I fumbled with the controls. I have you in my grasp now, though, don't I? Uh, not yet, but you can if you want, Crowley drawled. Uh, don't suppose you've got somewhere more comfortable we could do this, have you? Hmm, what about the shark tank? I turned it into a jacuzzi after you escaped. Huh, a jacuzzi, eh? Will I get to see you in one of those wetsuits? Hmm, I was planning to wear rather less than that, unless you have any objections. Crowley made a very approving sound and drew Aziraphale into another kiss. <laughs> no objections from me. Uh, saving the world can wait a few hours, I think, don't you? <laughs> or a few days, perhaps. Works for me. Uh, go on, then. Lead me deeper into your secret lair, Crowley said with a wink, lifting himself up and hopping off the table. <laughs> Is that innuendo? Aziraphale asked, gesturing for him to head out of the laboratory into the corridor. Uh, no? Oh, it's just I remember you saying things about penetrating my fortress and breaching my secret passageway. <laughs> okay, well, maybe that was innuendo, Crowley confessed. Aziraphale laughed and started walking a little closer to him, their arms brushing together with every stride. <laughs> Although, you're the one who was talking about a love missile going off. They walked in silence for a moment before Aziraphale gently clasped Crowley's hand in his own. Thank you, he said sincerely. For always coming back, I mean. I fear I would have been very lonely were it not for you. <laughs> How could I possibly have stayed away? You're not the avenging angel to me. You're just my angel. Aziraphale abruptly stopped walking, turning to Crowley and looking at him with such intense affection that Crowley's heart felt like it might burst. He couldn't believe this was happening the most secret of his fantasies actually coming true. And he knew that at some point, as always, he'd find himself back on that metal table with those leather restraints around his wrists. Only this time, he had a feeling it was going to be a lot more fun. The end. Uh, thank you for reading. Uh, please drop by the archive and let the author know what you thought of their work.